All right, all right, all right, all right. So um, the debate has been going on <laughs> even a lot more um, excitedly uh, <laughs> of the cameras. So um, my guest once again, Kwekubako, Martin Pebu, Alexander Fenyomaking, and Randy Abe. Now, a number of things have happened in the KNUSD, and some have said it's uh, a bizarre development. Um, <clears throat> at the close of last week, the conclusions <clears throat> on that matter, sorry, held by persons including Isankoma, uh, whom some people are referring to as the legal vigilante, <laughs> was that the, all the parties were engaged in using an illegal means, an unlawful means, to resolve a crisis, and that was wrong. Now, it was hoped that in the course of the week, things will get better. And so government issued a statement, you know, uh, helping to resolve the concerns that had been raised by uh, Teu and UTAG, including their members in the, in the interim council. Then we had government issued a statement again, giving a roadmap. <clears throat> and as Antehene Otunfo said to is the chancellor of the university taking the leadership role in resolving the process. We understood that by Wednesday, all the parties were supposed to uh, bring some nominations for a council, and then the interim one will be dissolved. And then by Friday, they would have met to endorse that. Unfortunately, all the parties say they submitted their members, but government did not submit its nominations by Wednesday. Only on Friday, for government's position to lead to an unnecessary drag of the discussions that were being held and eventually end up in a stalemate with accusations that government is forcing the union to, as it were, determine the members that it should bring on the council. So that's where we are. Um, I start with Randy on this note. What's your appreciation of what has gone on so far? Some say, uh, if you read <coughs> the communications from beginning to what we have gotten to, very bizarre. Uh, the government had made mistakes. Instead of recognizing the mistakes, it was making, uh, compounding the situation and further confusing itself. And uh, Otunfo has uh, said to taking over and hoping that we'll get to the end of the re re resolution. Well, you, you've, you've described the, the situation as bizarre. I think that it's, it's been a comedy of, of, of errors. Uh, we've seen display of incompetence from what has led us, what led us to, 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 to the mayhem on that day and the uh, um, government's intervention in the matter, you know. And let me make this point before I proceed. But for the level of reverence that uh, people have for Dotunfo, um, he would have been bashed seriously as the head of the university, as the chancellor of the university. Because you see, in all our narratives, some and have bashed him despite the reverence. You know, mm. Even in the way you were speaking now, he's seen as uh, the person who's uh, come from somewhere. Uh, uh, we have a state of confusion, and he's come from somewhere and is, is coming in to sort things out, you know. But he's been the main man from the very onset as a chancellor of the university. And you see, a lot of the decisions that led to the students also getting to those bizarre um, attitudes and all that were decisions that were not unilaterally taken by the vice chancellor. They were decisions taken by the council, you know, and in fact, you'd realize that one of those decisions, like the conversion of the mill halls, is a decision that even government endorsed, Professor Yanka, endorsed those decisions and even said that it was part of government policy and was asking other universities, including Alexander's University. I, I, I hear he's been threatening mayhem. Yeah, he says they should dare. Okay. That, they say For his hall, his particular yes. hall, he said they should dare. Professor Yanka says it's part of government policy. <laughs> you know? And so, yes, and so... You know, this, these are, are, are decisions that sat well with the university authorities and with the university council, which had all those representatives. I hear the students make the point that oh, we're just one who will be drowned, but at least we do not have evidence 
that they voted against it or they were against it and they were voted. So this is a decision that everybody, I don't like it when it's made to look as if the vice chancellor himself unilaterally without consulting any councillor. So everybody from the chancellor to the investor council were aware, they supported the implementation of, of all these things. Government itself, through the minister uh, uh, in charge of tertiary education, confirmed that it was part of government policy and, and wanted others to emulate it and all that. Now, if you look at some of those decisions, they, 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 I believe, were needless. And if you look at the fact that 48 hours after what happened on the campus, the students then told us that they had come into an agreement with the same university council, yeah. which is led to a reversal of those decisions. So must there be mayhem? We are now told that a there's a cost of, of a reversal of decisions, with the exception of the mix of the conversion yes. of the halls. Yeah. Because that one was going to be, um, 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 I think that it was going to be a bit difficult to, to reverse immediately. And it wasn't the immediate trigger yes. of the violence. Yes, yes, it wasn't. You know, but if you look at the four other issues, this Jama and Hall Week and all those things, I mean, it within 48 hours. They reversed all those decisions after we've had loss of property and everything. We're told it's estimated at 1.6 million, which meant that it was, it was needless. It was avoidable. And people took these decisions, and they believed that it was the right decision to take. Now, obviously, with what we saw on TV, government had to step in, mm. either at the regional level or the national level, to maintain law and order, make sure that, I mean, uh, you, you protect lives and property. So yes, the security moving in and all that, I mean, was, was, was right. Government had to do that. A position of curfew and all that. Government had to do that. Then it came with the dissolution of the council. And then the appointment of an interim uh, group. First question, Mr. Government. Before you take that decision, universities that are founded on acts are governed by acts. Those acts exist. I would expect that the first thing that anybody would do is to find out whether I have the legal authority to do what I intend doing. So what convinced government that he had the right to dissolve the council? Mm. What convinced government that he had okay, the right so to set sat up an last, sa last Saturday, it was unanimously re resolved here yeah. that that was a blunder mm. with Yabu Abinga Samoa even admitting that obviously the act, the KNUSE Act, doesn't give Claude, the president, power to appoint and remove the vice chancellor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the vice chancellor of KNUSD in particular. So I want us to progress the discussion. We have come to a point where we knew we were getting closer to a resolution, particularly with what you refer to the students, you know, uh, release that they brought. We were told just yesterday by the president of UTAC at KNUSD, Dr. Eric Opoku Mensah. He said, as we met on Monday, we set up the roadmap that on Wednesday, all unions together with government will submit their <coughs> nominations. UTAC and their unions and other unions did fulfill our part of the agreement and did so on Wednesday. And we expected today, Friday, the new council will be inaugurated so that the interim council can bring its work to an end. Government doesn't have a right to determine who should be chosen by a union to represent it on council. We are just surprised and we feel that government has reneged on its promise and that this is a breach of trust. So... Well, it sounds a bit confusing, right? but I, I, I get to... I, I truncated so to pick his... Yes. Yeah. You know, on the earlier issue I was raising, why I was focused on that point mm. was that, you see, it's not as if government just issued a statement and in a few minutes or a few hours, it realized that they had made a mistake and we withdrew from that position. Even 48 hours on, it was adding up to the interim council. It was adding. It came to add UTAG and others. 48 hours on. And I'm saying that something as basic as the act governing a university. Randolph, it's not that straight, though. It's not straight. Well, when I get my chance. 
Yeah. Well, it's not strict. I, I find it I find it basic, honestly. Because if I am going to take a decision, I must first of all determine for myself whether I have the right to do so. The act is subordinate to the constitution. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if 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 that were the and I'm sure that when you get there you have the opportunity of, of telling us. So then where where was the U turn? Why then is the U turn? Why is it that now we've come to accept what the act says and we want to go by what the act says so that there is institutional representation? And when there's institutional representation, I'm sure that irrespective of what the constitution says, you don't determine for institutions who should represent them. You have your four slots. You determine who fills those four slots. For the others, you don't determine for them. So if there's institutional representation and there's a place for UTAG, for TEU, for the students, it is not for government to determine who represents them. They must determine who uh, they, they, they deem appropriate to represent them. You know, that's, that's, that for me is the situation. Now, from what you read, it appears that all others are ready with their representatives, but for government. Now, if you read the statement, the last statement government issued on this, this matter, the one uh, signed by uh, the, the Honorable Minister of Information. Yes. It said that they had asked uh, the Chancellor to reconstitute uh, the council by Friday. Now, two things. When I saw the word reconstitute, the first thing I asked, I asked myself was, does that suggest that the dissolution stands? Because you can only reconstitute something that has been dissolved. Thank you. So in the midst of all the issues that have been raised with the law and the act and everything, does that presuppose that the dissolution stands? <coughs> For which reason it must be reconstituted? That's one. And two, if you have asked the two four to reconstitute the board, and by the act you're supposed to send your representatives, and you have asked them to do it by Friday, you will be the first to be expected to submit your representatives. So if we have Friday, Friday has come to pass, and from what you're reading, all others are ready with their reps. But government is not ready with its reps. And therefore, the council has not been constituted or reconstituted. Then you would want to ask maybe the seriousness that government attaches to its own uh, uh, statement and its own, uh, I don't want to say a directive, but its own overtures to the to, to to reconstitute. I'm still not sure if that is the appropriate, appropriate word. Mm. Okay. Do you see but I really out? want to. I really you, want to. Yeah, yeah. Do you really want to hear Martin's <laughs> okay. uh, constitutional thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, then Martin, you may yeah. come in immediately. Okay. Yes. Yes. But I, I, I would wish that we can progress mm. it so that we move on on to mm. where the stalemate now is. Mm. Um, I'm getting information that suggests that government has eventually now nominated its representatives mm -hmm. for that committee. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Um, when was that done? Uh, I, need to, I need to double confirm because mm -hmm. the, I'm seeing something that suggests that some nominations have been made. Mm -hmm. And so what okay. happened yesterday okay. may not continue. Okay. Yes. Yes. So basically, you know, as for the, the dissolution, me from day one, as soon as it became public, when I looked at the constitution, and looked at the KNUSD Act at 80, mm. I was left in no doubt that, look, the president had power to dissolve. Article 70 is clear. When there is an apparent conflict between an act of parliament and the constitution, the constitution takes precedence. Where is the conflict? So that's why, that's why I even said apparent. You see mm. in the Act 80, Section 7, mm. it just says the council shall comprise the following. Mm. It doesn't say who will appoint. And so some are jumping on to say that, oh, then that means that the president doesn't have power. That's the in interpretation that was being done. But the <coughs> constitution is clear that the governing councils are appointed by the president. Clear. Governing councils. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's Article 70. So, and even this uh, uh, act, Act 80, mm. that power that has been uh, said. So it's here, uh, uh, Article 70 is here. Before, let's finish with the problems of uh, Section uh, Act 80. Look. Before the Statute Law Review Commissioner did this, it was clear that it was the PNDC should appoint. Then the Statute Law Review Commissioner yanked out that PND, reference to PNDC. Mm -hmm. So in my estimation, then it means that it's because Article 70 is clear. And I'm thinking that he probably would have done so because when you look at the University of Ghana Act, mm -hmm. Act 806, Section 8 makes it clear 
that the president shall appoint a chairperson and the other members okay, of the university council. Apart from the University of Ghana, where we have the University of Energy and Natural Resources, the University of Health and Allied Sciences. Yeah, there are quite uh, a number of yeah, them. Mm. Quite a number of them. So they follow the same trend. So I'm, uh, well, I'm guessing that you. But there are the others too that clearly don't give the president the power in the act. Good. So mm. I'm saying that so that the remover probably would be informed by Article 70 because 70 is clear and mm. the Constitution is the bigger law. Mm. Now those removers, don't forget the Supreme Court mentioned that look, we should. Uh, review what the commissioner had done. Otherwise, there will be problems. Yes, that's what the Supreme Court said in this yeah. case that uh, we took on. Let yeah. me mention what uh, the Supreme Court said about this uh, work that had been done. It right. said Parliament didn't scrutinize the work. It was superficial, it was hasty, and that it was going to cause us troubles. Mm. Yes. But, but, the, so, but, but in the, the ultimate you know, outcome of yeah. that suit, yeah which we are referring to yeah. in the Supreme Court, yes, was, that, was that what Justice VCRAC Crab has done mm -hmm. um, yeah. is not wrong. Yes. So yes. it remains law. Yes. Anything but he has done, any changes he has made to the law remains law. Yes. Right. But the court was quick to point out that there were issues. Mm. So it's because the volumes were put before <coughs> mm. Parliament. Okay. That's how come the court to say, well, if Parliament didn't scrutinize, mm. then that is it. But please, you see, for the Supreme Court to make such a comment, let's 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 think deeply. Let's mm. reflect on this. Okay. It's not well, I mean, whilst, it was you look for, whilst you look for what it. Was this comment uh, yeah. in the Supreme Court. There, yeah, there now was, was uh, uh, twenty seventeen. Uh, okay. Twenty seventeen. This is a bit I of a perspective here. to what uh, Martin read? Martin Pebu is saying. You see, in Ghana now there is what is known as the laws of Ghana. This book I'm holding, the laws of Ghana. It seeks to consolidate or as it bring all the laws of Ghana into, you know, one hub Good. so that it makes easy accessing. Mm -hmm. And there was the Law Review Commission headed by Justice VCRAC Crab, who did that work. In fact, most of the laws too had a language which, which was a cake. Mm -hmm. And so part of his work was to bring the language to all ordinary people to read and understand. Mm -hmm. Now, in the course of that work, he had the power to make changes. Mm -hmm. Martin, Martin Pebu is saying that the KNUSC Act, he made a change to it. Mm -hmm. There was a provision that said that the PNDC secretary, mm -hmm. which will now mean the president, exactly. will appoint the KNUSC vice chancellor. Cool. He removed that and did not make a replacement for Very it. Very good, thank you. He is saying in the absence of that, it is Article 70 of the Constitution, which gives the president the general powers of appointing to boards and so on. That's Excellent. supposed to do it. Excellent. Okay, so yes, that's good. It's mm. good you've explained this. Yes, and you see, before I continue on it, please, let's say in my heart of hearts, mm. I wish that the president doesn't have to do all those. Okay. That at least so let's get to that quickly. But yeah. mm. when we look at the, the law, mm. we can't run away from yeah. it. What did the power. Supreme Court say? This is what the Supreme Court said. It said, look, it is, however, a sad commentary that Parliament failed to live up to the trust reposed in them by the people of Ghana by their mm. failure to be the true watchdog in such critical matters. This is because the deliberations on the adoption of the seven volumes of the laws of Ghana were hasty, superficial, and lacked any commitment. This was no indication of any elaboration, there was no indication of any elaborate study and scrutiny of the volumes for any informed contributions by members who were just satisfied to pass them. The result is the unraveling too late in the day of far-reaching changes that perhaps were never contemplated. Some of the changes or amendments have far-reaching consequences for our criminal justice system and are already unsettling decisions fashioned over the years by our courts. Yet, Parliament approved them all and takes full responsibility for them all. Then okay. it goes, and then the Supreme Court also went on further mm. to say that the Attorney General mm. should fashion bills and okay. go back to Parliament All to right, correct so, this. So things. let's come back here. Yes. So what Martin is reading is that hmm. VCRC crafts changes that he has made in the laws by way of his work. Somebody went to court to challenge his authority to be able to refine the law, including changing part of the law. Mm -hmm. The ultimate is that the Supreme Court said, what he had done was in accordance with law. He hadn't done anything wrong. 
but they took a... Because it went yeah. through parliament. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because, because parliament, it parliament didn't went yeah. through But they took parliament on yes. for not scrutinizing yes. the process. Yes. Okay, so but now... There are so many lawyers yes. so, who... So now me. let's proceed to KNUC. Yes, mm. yes. So, so what I'm saying is that it's because uh, the commissioner took off the reference to the PNDC secretary. Mm -hmm. That's how come now people are saying, oh, yeah, then it means that the president doesn't have the power to appoint. But I'm saying, no, 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 no. Not so fast. Article 70 is clear that is the president who has power to appoint the governing council, members of the governing council. Maybe for emphasis, we should read. Um, so 71 um, DII. So, okay, the president shall, in consultation with the Council of State, appoint the DII, the governing bodies of public corporations. And please, when they use the word public corporations here, it's not just the commercial ones owned by government, but in this instance, the universities also qualify. If Sankuma doesn't seem to agree with yeah. this postulation you have yes. about including public universities into but that uh, is this it. thing. In the, uh, well, he's asking questions yes. about them. So in the case of uh, uh, NMC versus Attorney General, okay. yeah, the Supreme Court made a distinction. Mm. There is the profit-making ones, the commercial ventures, and they're non-commercial. Okay. So this, the universities will fall under the non-commercial. Okay. For the avoidance of doubt, parliament itself. So where was parliament looking when they passed Act 806, the University of Ghana Act, mm -hmm. and in Section 8, they clearly stated, let me read, right. says the president shall, in accordance with Article 70 of the Constitution, appoint the chairperson and other members of the university council. Okay. And there are several other universities. Mm. Council, let, uh, uh, Sam, let me make this last point. Those insisting on the changes that CRAB made, mm. which they are saying, oh, yes, 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 that means that the president lacks the power. Call. Please, when we open Act 80, okay. you will find that there is provision still in Act 80 that... Act 80 is the KNUSC Act. KNUSC Act. Mm. That there should be a member nominated by the committee for the defense of the revolution. CDR. Mm -hmm. Now they should tell me, is there a CDR member on the university council? <laughs> Don't approbate and reprobate. Okay. Let's be consistent. Mm. Is there a CDR member on the university council? If okay. you open your act, it, right. you so, will see provision. So that's so, one of the four so, so taken maybe, by government. Yeah. So that's one yeah. of the mistakes. So maybe so this is not last bit. Because the majority of lawyers who have done the interpretation and insist that the president but, doesn't have power yes. come to a conclusion that the act takes away the power from the president to do that for mm -hmm. KNUST. Yeah. And they say mm -hmm. that the principle of law you have learnt mm -hmm. in interpretation of laws, yeah. uh, uh, statutes and deeds, yeah. is that mm -hmm. where an express provision has been made for something, it takes away the general, yeah. expressio juris. Yeah. So in that regard, mm -hmm. you w here is express. Mm -hmm. The express provision defeats the constitution's <laughs> Broad <laughs> it uh, provision. The constitution is the bigger no. The constitution is the statute. Is exactly. The Sam, statute. Sam yeah. is pushing Some the boundaries. Okay. <laughs> Please, I'm, I'm asking <laughs> questions. No, so Sorry. Okay. So let me Sorry. answer. So yeah. let me answer. Yeah. Yeah. Article 1, clause 2 makes it clear that the constitution is supreme. Mm. Any other law which is inconsistent with the constitution is void to okay. the extent of that inconsistency. Okay. okay. So the constitution is the <coughs> final authority. So 170 is clear. It's mm. clear. And even parliament by its own act subsequently has acknowledged that the president has power to appoint the members. Interesting. 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 Under, Interesting. Uh, they said, uh, okay, so let, let's now move yeah. to Kaku. Yeah. Let's yeah. now move to Kaku. Yeah. Um, let, let's, I'm avoiding, last, uh, I'm avoiding the situation where we turn this place into uh, an LLB <laughs> no, class. Just to clear 101. Something. Something. Just to clear, interpretation. Just to clear yeah. something for mm. me. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if Martin's position mm -hmm. is to be upheld, mm -hmm. it's sound, isn't it? It's sound. Well, it's, 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 he's trying to convince me. <laughs> but this is the question I have. Okay. Uh -huh. If his position mm -hmm. were the appropriate position, mm -hmm. how come government has backtracked? Okay. You have asked that question already. Yes. So let's go to the now. How come let's, government has backtracked? Let, and now, okay. government is focused on its four representatives. Right. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. So this is the answer. Definitely, as I said, the whole uh, one very uh, significant aspect of this is that we all wish that the president doesn't have to have all those powers. Mm. So it's good that the president has been mm. magnanimous by saying, okay, I'll hold back. Let you two four lead. And please, in Kumasi, we all know two four is like head of state. So it's good. That's good sense because mm. he is so much in charge there. Okay. But it doesn't mean so that the constitution, constitution is no okay. longer supreme. No, it's still okay. it's his power. So, so and so can in, in 30 seconds, in 30 seconds, it. Martin, yes. wow. don't, yes. don't respond to uh, okay. uh, Randy. <laughs> yes. He's forgotten. Yeah. He thinks he's yeah. on Good Morning Ghana. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So tell me, 
In 30 seconds, yeah. what do you see to be the path okay. to a resolution in the, in the impasse? Uh, to be candid, to the extent that there was so much distraction, okay, yeah, the riots and everything, the negative uh, aspects, everything that has gone so bad with the riots and that, I think that, look, in proper standard management practices, the old council has to step aside. Yes, they should step aside. Which look, is what they are doing now. Exactly. Bring uh, on oh, fresh no, no, no. Bring okay. on fresh blood. You want Let's the status quo as in government, the way government proceeded, yes. to be what should be? Yes, that we should have a fresh university council. Mm. Those nominees. Including the so, chancellor. Uh, no, hey, chancellor, yeah, it's, it's almost like life. So chancellor soon is there. We are talking about the institutional reps. But and I the think rep. he wanted people to take responsibility. Yes, so the members, but you know, hey, Chancellor, so let's be very practical. When you step in Kumasi, <laughs> okay, so it is so about please. the two four, and it's not about the Chancellor. It's about oh, the he's two a four, chancellor. right? And because of the parties, when you it comes to dealing with peace. KNUSC, because it is a two for, we should be discriminatory. That's no, what you're not, saying. The, the word is not discriminatory. You see, in the law, as I said, the president should share the power with two for when it comes to reconstituting because it helps. Because you need him for peace and everything for the institution to run. You see, he looms large. Would you have there. said same yes. if it were when the University of Education. The, well, the, I haven't seen that the chief, the chief of Efutu or so, has asserted so much authority in the land that he's everything. I'm not aware. If I were to get evidence that that is it, then it makes good sense. You know, we've always been saying this, and that even though the constitution gives the president power to do certain appointments, it's also constitutional for him to delegate to the okay. uh, hand. All and right, thank you, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Very interesting views uh, shared by Martin mm -hmm. and. Um, we have confirmed that the government has made its appointments that the lack of which brought matters to a head yesterday and uh, stalemate. So there is uh, government's nominees to KNUSD Council, and they are Nana Efa Apenting, a retired diplomat, and Omar Hene of Bompata <coughs> Traditional Area. There is Hilda Heger um, Padu, who is alumnus and public health specialist. There is Steve Anoff Amwining Yangson, president of Ghana Institute of Engineers, and Alex Quino, a private legal practitioner. Kweku, we're, we're, we're getting to get, resolving. Just a little bit of information. Yeah. Where these uh, people on the old council. Uh, it looks like reps, are yeah, they the same people or they are the leaving? Yeah, the I've seen. The yeah, I've seen some who were there, but not of the original council. Mm -hmm. Were they? No. I just wonder. But, but there were some who were in the original, uh, the purported dissolved one, yeah. and who were also still on the yes, yes. Yeah, one that is now them. going to be dissolved, the interim. Yeah. No, yeah. No answer <coughs> to this mm. He says these four. Mm. Are they new? Are they? Uh, were they part? Of, of the interim, no, no. not the interim, the, of the oh, original, the, the dissolved council. Okay, uh, I need to check, but I think none of them, uh, Hilda. Yeah, none where of was them. Hilda? Yeah, this are okay, interim. these are fresh. Okay, quick, okay, that's yeah. interesting. Mm. See, you know, last week I nearly lost my balance uh, on this matter when uh, it was disclosed that the students and the university management had been able to strike a deal, you know in the wake of all the violence. Uh, I, was, I was intrigued by that mm. because my view was that it showed that there was a potential yeah. for dialogue to have succeeded mm. much earlier than before the violence. Whatever it is, we've gone beyond that. Okay. Uh, but Randy asked a good question, which is a question that has been agitating me for a while. So, and we would see it if we get a full... Before you start, why were you asking whether they belong to the dissolved council? Why were you asking? Well, Two of them belong to the interim council. But why yeah. are you asking? Yeah, you What's see, the purpose? You remember last week, I, I raised this point about the moral authority, you know, and even quote-unquote legitimacy, not in terms of constitutional sanctions, okay. uh, injunction, but to drive the resolution process. When the original council, governing council, my candid opinion, had lost, you know, the capability to deal with the mischief. Okay. All right, proceed. And even the interim council became a center of dispute. So if you recall, I was advocating or canvassing for a certain structure independent mm. of the original council, even if it was to be restored right. because of the industrial agitation and right. things. 
and then also the interim council being phased out, you know. So the question about reconstitution or restoration, until I see the full list, complement of the membership, I'm not too sure. Government has changed all its reps. All its reps. I've, I've just changed yeah. the, the council. You, you you Utah wanted to maintain their reps. Mm. Yes. 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 The yes. The yes. That's what the issue is. That's the bone of contention. The students are maintaining. Mm. In principle. But government has changed all its reps. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so you see, but who, so who, who is going to lead the resolution? The governing council, if it's new, one may think that it could lead the resolution process. But if it is not entirely new, I would suggest that they should give the investigations of what happened to a body independent of them. They could appoint it. We got that suggestion that that's what the Tunfo was intended in yes, doing. Yes. Uh, set up a committee separate from the yes. council to do their that investigations. That would be a better place, mm. organism, to deal with this mischief. Okay. Okay. The governing council still could have been the appointing authority. That yes, but you take the governing council out of that whole process. Uh, having said that, and, and I don't want to extend, uh, push the lines. Look, I'm not one of those who would want to exclude the chancellor entirely from blame when it comes to these issues. He was there from day one. Either he didn't engage them or they didn't engage him. Either we both are guilty, quote unquote, of the situation we found ourselves in. I, my brother, I, I, I will resist the temptation of talking of Kumasi and a, a head of state <laughs> sentence. <laughs> my Republican blood was boiling okay. when I heard no, you say that. To. I, I know, I know, yeah. you were putting it in context. Yes. <laughs> but the point is that we should be clear in our minds. Mm. The Chancellor was there from day one. Mm -hmm. When the processes began, which led to where we are today. So I don't think we should try and do things <coughs> about exclusion. Even government's own conduct is part of it. You know, this idea that, oh, we've handed over the matter to Chancellor to resolve. Creating the impression as if Chancellor was all the time not involved in the matter. He was. Okay. Let's be honest and state mm. some of these things. Okay. As we so what do, you, what do you say? They are saying that uh, UTAC, for example, the government sought to pressurize it to, to as it were, determine for it who it should bring but, to the new council. As we know now, uh, TEU, UTAC, the SRC, and GRASAC, they have all maintained their members. I think government had no business pushing that line. Let me okay. be honest with you. Mm. It's ideally good if they were all new people. If the, the uh, Yukta says, this is my rep, why should government insist that bring another person? Does government have any legal authority to do that? Would the law support government to mm. choose okay. for Yukta who its rep should be? Mm. I think government shouldn't waste its time on some of those things. All right. Okay. okay, so it does appear that there is a resolution uh, in sight, even though this would have happened yesterday if government has submitted it list by Wednesday, as all of them had previously agreed would have had a new council inaugurated yesterday and then uh, government's desire of resumption of academic work within 14 days from when the disturbances occurred would have happened. Yes, so Alex, these are matters that you have a, a rare experience in. Yep. You see, are something. we getting to a resolution? Something. Mm. My problem is the bad faith. On whose side? Fortunately, has been expressed generally. You see, unfortunately, in Ghana, if you talk about governance at our universities, the immediate response, if you are in government circles, will be political interference. I find that most unfortunate. Okay. Our institutional institutions are funded wholly by government. Vice Chancellor, all workers are paid by government. They take school fees. They don't release that to the consolidated fund. They spend these for infrastructure and other activities. They take 100% of the IGF? Yes. Okay. When Ken Oforiata attempted, they resisted it. I see. The judiciary is asking for if, what percentage they are not if, getting. If, oh, so the if, doesn't affect them. if you want to intervene to ensure good governance and ensure that right things are done, 
the likelihood is interference. <coughs> now, the basic knowledge I have in, in company law, shareholders would appoint directors. And majority shareholder, the, share, the majority shareholder or the majority shareholders would have overriding powers, mm -hmm. although they are not to stampede the right of the minority. And if directors are not steering affairs in a proper manner, shareholders are the people who eventually will lose. So shareholders will step in. Can we carry on this principle or our, this basic knowledge into this matter? Good governance. Mm -hmm. You see, I appreciate the need to ensure independence. But that independence cannot be absolute. I have sat in one meeting where the head of that public university boldly <coughs> told the Minister of Education that if you want to write to me, pass it through NCT. I was in Abidjan, a former deputy minister, I can't tell which regime, told me how frustrated he was some eight, nine years ago when he had the privilege of serving because he needs basic information from some of our public universities and the management will resist. I have seen a government <coughs> communication requesting for information to enable it to take certain steps for the university's own interest. It was seen as some interference and there was not even a basic response. I'm saying that let's shift the focus from this interference to coexistence. Why? What is the interest of Napo? Mm -hmm. A well-respected member of parliament, a medical doctor, man in that ministry, mm -hmm. he would have the business of interference, in interfering in the affairs of the university, Nana Akufuadu, this government. Then we play to the political circles. Then it becomes ethnocentric. Mm -hmm. Then we defeat the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. Then people would Encourage the impunity. It shouldn't be the case. Now let's come to the law. You are saying you are saying what you just said is not possible. Mm -hmm. Let's you're come. You are dealing with human beings who, have, who have interest I and political interests. I agree. That is often that is why entrenched. that is why yeah. that is why I underscored that with the issue of bad faith. Okay. That people will not want to come genuinely on the table mm -hmm. because of the interests that you're talking about, okay. and instead of expressing it in good faith, mm. genuinely, why? I put it out there, that some of these vice chancellors, before they get appointment, some of them attempt looking for political patronage. Mm -hmm. True or false? Yes, true. That's true. In Please. Yeah, At our yeah. universities, yeah. our lecturers should come and condemn what I'm saying, that don't they conduct themselves on partisan lines? So that is where the problem is. So even when you genuinely want right things to be done, which party does he belong? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then the whole thing collapses. Yeah. Look, don't let us unduly frustrate these students. It is their future. It's their lives. When this unpass started, I am on the MPP platform. The attack on Napo, Napo do this. He said, look, the universities are independent. Governing council, when the man received petitions, he forwarded them to the governing council. The governing council wrote back to the minister that they cannot review certain decisions. The man did not say that by force, do it. He said, I have received these, deal with it. Then eventually, the crisis came to a crescendo. People were destroying property. Students, university students destroying state property. Hmm. Serious. Government intervenes. I am happy that Act 80, I've been reading Act 80 mm -hmm. and I've been seeing the inconsistency. Mm -hmm. Ekeda, yeah, I agree. That, that, that has not changed though. Uh -huh. so that's it. Mm -hmm. Now we know the set, the so lacuna. The, please, I beg you, let me finish my point. <laughs> Don't confuse me like you tried. Try, let me try and do this. I'll try and do this. You see? Then eventually. You see, there's, there's one also additional reason your presence here is very important. Thankfully, we have the ruling of the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. which you are going to briefly just no, no, know, no. kill the issue for no. us mm -hmm. about the effect of that Supreme Court decision 
on the new vice chancellor at University of Education no Winneba. So can you conclude on that? I will, very I will, I will safely yeah. land. Okay. I will safely land. Okay. If you permit me. So now we are being told that the government's action was illegal. These are opinions. Nobody has gone to court. You see the problem I have again yeah. with our country yeah. and our public discourse. Mm. We raise, oh, this is illegal. Mm. But if you go to court, you are rather seen as litigant. You are rather seen as a stubborn person. Mm. But go to court with all the issues. Mm. A court will be more than determined to expeditiously resolve this matter for us. Then we have a clear path. Nobody is ready to go to court. Utah is not making that effort. Tewu is not making that effort. But we want to put the pressure then it becomes political, etc., etc. I court. want to say... Go to, go to court shouldn't be the first thing to do. I have not, not said so, policy, but when you have a serious disagreement... Even the court is promoting, you know, I agree. ADR. No, don't misconstrue. We pass an ADR it's law, in our act. Even encouraging criminal, all of us I agree. to promote ADR. Samson, yeah. even in our criminal code, okay. some misdemeanor, okay. you are encouraged to yeah. choose a part of reconciliation. That's right. Yeah. But I'm saying... You've mentioned interest here. Mm. When you yourself, you know, you have an entrenched position in a matter, I think the best platform is to use the court system. Mm. Than to lean behind a political party, than to call secretly a party member and say, Charlie, we are in difficulty to push this. Mm. Meanwhile, you know that you are no more pushing a genuine interest, but you are pushing a partisan interest. Mm. So the whole thing becomes a fraternal matter, right. fraternal solidarity, mm. Mm. rather than the substance. Is that the way we want to do it? No, I okay. think it is wrong. Mm. Where we are, the interim council, government put it in place as a matter of necessity. Government was clear that they have a limited tenor mm. to normalize the situation. But government has equally acknowledged the general concerns that look, this position does not really sit well in the law. Okay. So, Chancellor, as part of the reconciliation, reconciliation the process of resolving the matter, mm. let's do this. Okay. Now, on the, on the issue of old members of the council, I am reliably informed that the consensus was that parties were going to bring new nominees. I am reliably informed that parties agreed to bring new nominees and that there's a sudden bad faith, sudden U-turn. On the unions. That's why they haven't changed their... I'm saying their that there's a sudden yeah, bad faith, where, sudden U-turn. we verify that? Point? Okay. <laughs> well, well <laughs> they, are, they, 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 like they are all listening and they would, they would get in touch with us shortly okay. to show whether or not it was agreed that those to be brought were supposed to be new representations. Yeah, we need to verify um, that. Okay, so you can see... You know, and end, you know. Uh, well, coming. I think that if all parties mm. decide to play by the rules okay. and look at the ultimate interest of the students, right. this thing will not drag. Okay. But if overly mm. people act with their partisan sentiment in them, okay. they would want to embarrass government, frustrate every effort government intends. And then people, things will get personal. Right. That is not what we need. Okay. We need solutions. All right. And you. I think government intends well. Thank you. Thank you very much. There are very interesting comments, uh, including some from um, persons within the university community high up. I will be sharing some of them with you shortly. Thank you.